Okay. So uh, thank you for the uh, op 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 opportunity to present this work. So this is a series of works I have been doing for the past one year. And the idea is that uh, we are going to look at action like um, particles and the cosmology re re related to it. So I'm try to I'll try to convince convince you that if there is action like particles present in our un universe, then uh, we have uh, uh, ways to look at uh, uh, biogenesis, neutrino mass models, and those aspects of action like part particles can be probed via cosmological of of observables like non gaussianity prime primordial black hole and induced gravitation wave so let's begin so this is the outline of my talk um uh, uh, so first part is uh, uh, action like particle as the origin of primordial density perturbations and in this ma manner it can also give rise to uh, non gaussianities um i will try to present a mod, mod model briefly where the action like particles is also responsible for generating neutrino mass and uh, due to its decay in early universe can give rise to leptogenesis and uh, because of such action like particles uh, uh, you can also have non gaussianity and this can act as a probe of such high scale new, neutrino mass models and biogenesis and then in the final part of the talk i'm going to show you how such action like particles can give rise to Prime primordial black holes, which can be your dark matter candidate, and can also induce second order tensor but 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 perturbations, which can be detected. And the final slide is going to be uh, the recently measured pulsar timing array in nanograph and uh, other uh, collaborations can come from uh, action like part particles. Oh, okay, so just a brief review on um the scenario that i'm going to fo fo focus on so this this scenario is known as the carboton scenario so what is the car carboton scenario carboton scenario is any spectator field which is present during in inflation i denote inflaton to be the phi and the carboton to be the six sigma and if they are present during early universe as a spectator field during uh, inflation then they can also, then they can fluctuate during inflation, accumulate isocurvature uh, fluctuations, and these isocurvature fluctuations can later on um, give rise to adiabatic perturbations that you actually measure in the CMB. And these adiabatic per perturbations, if they are large enough, not at the CMB scale, but a small sense scale of the universe, can give rise to primordial black holes and induced corruption. Maybe is what I'm going to focus on. And particularly, I'm going to show you how this pans out very nicely for action like mod, 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 models. Okay, so let's skip this. So as I al already told you, so this is like a light scalar field represent during inflation and the fluctuations uh, gets con converted to adiabatic uh, perturbation that you see in the, in the CMB. So the uh, timeline of the uh, story of the inflaton and the car carbaton behaves like this. So this is the plot of energy density versus redshift or time, let's say. So during the stages of inflation, the green represents the uh, dens the density amount of dens density fluctuations present in the inflaton, the phi, and the blue represents amount of density perturbations present in the carboton or the uh, spect spectator field. Now, as you can see, uh, after inflation, so during in inflation, this blue of the carboton is subdominant, so it does not contribute to the adiabatic perturbation, rather it uh, contributes to the isocurvature perturbations. But uh, then at the end of inflation, the inflaton decays and creates the red radiation bath, which is in red. And then um, this, uh, this carboton still does not decay, it go, goes on. And now at some point of time, for example, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for example, uh, if you have a quadratic potential for the Carboton, then it can start to dominate over radiation. As you can see, there will be a period of mat matter domination, carboton dominance, de depending upon the potential, of course. And then at some point of time, the carboton can decay. And when this domination and decay happens, then you have converted the isocurvature present in the carboton to the adiabatic perturbation. So the isocurvature perturbations become adiabatic perturbations during the domination of the car carboton. And then here, using this type of scenario, what you can do is that even if you have an inflation model that does not sat satisfy the CMB, does not give rise to the but amount of perturbation that you see in the CMB, 
your isocurvature fluctuations from the ad adiabatic converted to, uh, sorry, um, isocurvature to adiabatic from the carbotone can satisfy the CMB. So now this is the story for the um, carbotone. Uh, similarly, now you, you can ask, ask the question that uh, what happens if you don't have an M squared phi square potential, that is you don't have a particle uh, which starts here and oscillates here, instead it starts at some other point of time. Then I mean, uh, so 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 then the story of the action like particle will come into play. I'm I'm, I'm going to show you res results how how it looks like. So as I already told told you, you get amount of um, curvature perturbation and you get some amount of isocurvature per perturbations. And these isocurvature per uh, perturbations are con converted to the at ad ad adiabatic perturbation that you see in the see in the CMB. So. For a simple m square phi square potential, as you can see, the curvature perturbation that you get from the potential is put, is proportional to this uh, the am, am, amount of density perturbation that you get it here. But if you start from like an action like potential, like a cosine, then you are not starting from an m square phi square, right? Then you can start from a thing, thing scenario like here or here or here, and then you get some extra contributions because of the nature. Of the cosine potential, let let's say, so you, you don't do not have uniform os, os, oscillation throughout. And then pe pe people have studied this be 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 before. You you can uh, have some analytic understanding of such pot 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 potentials. So bas basically, if you try to understand in terms of delta n uh, form form formalism for uh, generating curvature perturbations, then basically the number of e folds of uh, that uh, the whole system spends the carboton spends. Uh, the first dead so sigma is the carboton um, uh, field so um, uh, so the first derivative is your uh, amount of curvature perturbation that you generate and the second derivative is the non gaussian integrated unit and these are some analytic relation that you can see uh, and and this also affects the N N ns the spectral index the carboton dynamics and the scale of inflation affects how much energy uh, in in ns you can get so then uh, similarly, you can also, also compute FNL, which is the non-Gaussianity. And this is not, nothing but the second derivative of the delta N with respect to the phi, phi field. So the first derivative is the um, density perturbation, P of zeta, the two-point function. And the second de de derivative is basically the F, 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 FNL. And what does this these parameters de de depend upon? So if you remember, I already told you uh, in this store store in this store story let, let's say here the ratio between the amount of density uh, in the energy density play present in the inferton sector and the amount of energy density present in the carboton sector plays a non trivial role so for example if you increase this then you will have different predictions for uh, p of zeta and different predictions for f fnl so this plays a non-trivial role. What is the energy density in the carboton sector and what is the energy density in the inferton sector or rather at late time uh, the red radiation sector because that has been converted to red radiation. And then the other key parameter is the carboton decay width uh, because here um, this determines, so if you, re if, you re if you remember this story here, which I told you, uh, this, uh, the blue region here where the carboton dom dominates is the time where the isocurvature perturbations are converted to adiabatic perturbations. And the duration of this time when the carboton dominates the energy universe is determined by the decay width of the carboton because when the decay width becomes equal to the Hubble, this carboton will decay and you stop, the carboton domination stops. So the carboton decay width also participates in the mm, uh, F FNL. And that is going to be the key in relating the BSM particle physics. Like for example, here we will talk about action-like physics. So the decay width of the action-like particle will play a non-trivial role in uh, generating two-point functions that you see in the CMB and also the FNL. And the de decay width in some concrete BSM scenario, as, you, as I'm going to show you, will also uh, going to uh, with, uh, are also going to encapture the couplings and the mass of the carboton and all, all these non trivial story. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, just uh, show you one example. If you take a cosine potential, then the decay width can be expressed in terms of the mass of the action like particle and the Pechi queen break, break, breaking scale and it looks like this. And then, um, so, uh, so this is just a plot of how the 
P of zeta, that's the power spectrum with respect to the field value. This phi, phi, uh, phi sorry, sigma, remember, this, this is the field value of the action like part, particle. So if you start, start uh, means at what point of time you throw the, so that this is the initial field, field value. So if you start from something very close to pi, then you see, you can see you have a large power spectrum that you see in the CMB. And if it starts from some, uh, some something small, then you uh, get some uh, somewhere here. And this red and the dashed represents, so red represents the quadratic potential, which I showed you, m squared phi squared here. And the red dashed, and the red dashed uh, line is for the action-like potential, which is the cosine. So, which means that, uh, sorry, sorry, the the red dashed line shows the m square phi square, and the red solid line shows the cosine per, per, per potential. So, then you you can see that what kind of uh, initial field value of the action like particle you want to throw in order to match with the CMB and it also affects the non-Gaussian I'll, I'll show you some detailed res result here. Okay, so then uh, what we did here was that we took a cosine pot potential which is modified by the presence of an extra BSM matter sector. So as, as you know, if you have some extra uh, vector like quarks present in your the the theory, which here is just called MUMD. So for QCD action, we know what is the mass of MU and what is the mass of the MMD, but for a dark sector action like potential, MU and MD can be free parameter. And this is a plot of the potential with respect to the action. So A is just a, this combination of phi by AFA, the action field value. And you, you can see the shape of the potential chain changes by varying this ratio between the mass of the two type, two flavors of vector like quarks, you could basically change the shape, 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 of, shape, shape of the potential. So then uh, what's the job is you write down the Friedman equations. This is the Friedman equation for the energy density of the curve of the action like particle and the radiation bath. This is the Friedman equation or the Bolz Boltzmann equation for the radiation. This is for the axion. This is for the ev evolution of the field. And then you, so, so this, this is the Boltzmann and the Friedman equation with respect to time. So you can con convert time into number of e folds via hubble and if you if you if you if you remember if you remember what i showed you is that the the way to cal calculate perturbations via delta informalism is just the first derivative of the potential will give you the power spectrum and the second derivative of the potential will give you the uh, f fnl here so what what uh, you do is you write down this equation of motion solve for the field values convert it into number of e folds and then, um, uh, and then uh, basically you find out the first derivative and the second derivative and third derivative. And these are your P of zeta, FNL and GNL, which have some measurable pros prospects. So here I roughly show you some results for certain choice of benchmark points for the scale of inflation, the scale the, of confinement, the scale of Pechi queen breaking scale and the decay width of the action like particle, which is the curve button here, you can see how the um, dependence upon the power spectrum P of zeta with respect to the field value behaves like. Now, if you also demand that this action like particles should also generate the power spectrum or the P of zeta that you see in the CMB, then you have to keep this number to what you measure in the CMB, right? So you have to keep the y-axis to be something around uh, two into 10, 10 to the power mi minus nine, which is the red dashed line here. So then you can see once you have fixed this value here, then not all values of the initial uh, field is al allowed, only one or two val val values are allowed. And then you fix the initial field value of the action from the CMB constraint. Now, once you fix this, then the similar plot in respect to FNL with respect to the initial field value gives you the amount of FNL or the non-Gaussianity that you are expected to see in the CMB. Because remember, you are normalizing with respect to the CMB value, that means the CMB scale, so you're expecting the CMB. And from CMB and the Planck data, we already know that there are constraints and FNL needs to be of the order of five or le less than five. So now you can see that your microphysics parameters, that is the decay width of the action like particle, the mass of the, mass of the action like particle, scale of confinement, all are now in an interesting manner predicting some FNL which is either ruled out or can be detected in next generation 
uh, non gaussianity experiments like large scale structure and 21 centimeter which i, I will again details uh, show you so this is a result for uh, another set of choice of the scale of confinement and the which equal breaking scale and the action decay mass so let's skip this let's instead go to uh, neutrino mass mod, mod, mod model that we try to re realize in this action like framework so what was the idea the idea was that you take a radial uh, so you take a complex scalar now this complex scalar is uh, charged under u1 b minus l so that when this gets a wave you break the u1 b, b minus l and and this uh, scalar couples to the right-handed neutrinos so that means when this gets a wave this right-handed neutrino gets a mass and this you uh, is usually known in the literature as the mayoron model because uh, this uh, is a right-handed neutrino uh, is like a mayoron Part particle and the mass is generated by the scalar field. And then the phase part of this mayoron behaves like a action like part particle because again, this is coming from a strongly coupled sector and this has a cosine potential generated non perturbatively. And this also has currents, as, as you can see, this chi uh, couples to the right handed neutrino current. So this chi particle, which was a phase of the action, which was phase and behaves like the action like particles, can now decay into the right-handed neutrino. So on one hand, this action-like particle is responsible for generating the neutrino mass and the seesaw scale. And on the second hand, this can this guy can decay into neutrino, right-hand neutrinos, which can have subsequent decays into standard model, satisfying the Sakharov conditions and giving you baryogenesis via leptogenesis. Uh, so, so these are some of the ex ex expressions of the uh, action like particle decay width or the mayoron decay width, which I show here, written in terms of the action like particle mass, symmetry breaking scale, and the right handed neutrino mass, as you can see here. So now all your particle physics prop um, par, uh, BSM parameters the mass of the action, uh, seesaw scale, right handed neutrino mass will be sensitive to the decay width. And this decay width, remember, is sensitive to the power spectrum and the FNL value. So you will have one to one prediction to the non Gaussian energy energy. So these are some of the res results which I show you. On the x axis is the, is the right handed neutrino mass generated via this action like uh, particle, and the y axis is the F, 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 FNL non Gaussian energy. As, as you can see, some of these regions are already ruled out by the Planck 2018 data for certain choice of uh, the. B minus L scale, that is the seesaw breaking scale and the right hand neutrino mass. Uh, and um, some of these three regions, which are not ruled out, like for example, here, uh, will be probed by the next generation large scale structure LSS on the CMB, CMB uh, experiment. And then, if, if you also um, have leptogenesis, that, that means you generate the asymmetry that you see in the, uh, in the, in, in the large scale stru structure. E eta b uh, from this carbaton decay or rather action like particle decay to right handed neutrino then you can you are further constraints to limit yourself to certain neutrino mass and certain certain sorry yeah certain seesaw scale and certain heavy neutrino mass which is again gives you certain predictions for the non gaussianity fnl which is measured so the uh, so the so the interesting point here which to be highlighted is that these are very heavy scale physics these right-handed neutrino masses and the seesaw scale are very heavy scale physics. There is no way you can test this kind of physics in your lab laboratory searches, but your cosmological observations like non-Gaussianity can pro provide you a pathway to test this kind of physics. Okay, so then I move to the last part of, of my talk, which is I'm, I'm, I will try to generate large, uh, large uh, curvature part, part perturbation from this kind of action like part particles. Again, as carboton or a spectator field and try to see if these primordial black holes can be large enough to satisfy uh, uh, dark matter. So as we all know that primordial black hole is a very in interesting candidate for a dark matter and it has many other um, possibilities like it can be a uh, non-thermal source of many particle production, it can reheat the universe and many other interesting scenarios. And uh, we want to understand what could, what could have uh, happened in early universe that could give rise to such primordial black hole. So I was trying to uh, sketch out some of the ways people have studied how to form primordial black holes. And um, this was originally started by Hawking, of, of, of course, and people studied 
inflationary perturbations, phase transitions, and many other ways, even nonlinear dynamics like fragmentation of scalar field, infects from top topological de defects from actions. People have studied many ways uh, to generate parameter black hole. So um, the idea is very simple. Uh, as you go, so, so uh, different perturbation modes uh, from let's say inflationary con con consideration. What CMB me measures is just the perturbation mode or the length scale of the perturbation is around 0 0.05, right? But uh, that's where the constraint for the CMB is. However, for any other length scales of the universe, particularly smaller and smaller length scales, which means larger and larger value of scale, there are no other constraint. And there you could get the primordial uh, density per perturbation can be as large as 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 1. And if those perturbations are large and enough and satisfy certain conditions developed by Hawking and Hoop, then um, one can have uh, formation of primordial black holes. And uh, they, the people have studied this a lot from inflationary model. And usually for single field inflation model, this is a big trouble because you need to, uh, because remember for single field inflation, the deal is that the same field should source small curvature perturbation that you see in the CMB of order 10 to the minus nine, but large enough at some other length, length scale, such that the, you can form the remedial black holes. So this leads to a certain degree of fine tuning. People have, there are lots of debate of what, what can be trusted, what cannot be trusted. And there are many scenarios um, that can work and that cannot work out. Okay, so um, just uh, going to show how this works is that uh, you generate some amount of curvature perturbation. It's a dis distribution of the energy den density. And then you look at uh, some value of this uh, cr critical dense density of the coming from this curvature perturbation beyond which it becomes very, very uh, compact and it collapses into a short style red radius and you get parameter black holes. And so that's that's the e easy story. And there are some definitions, for example, the energy density in the primordial black hole sector um, normalized with respect to the total energy density. You give it a um, term which is called beta. It's this mass is called known as mass fraction on the abundance of primordial black hole. And of course, the mass of the primordial black hole, like how, how large or how small these mass, mass, masses are. And then there are several constraints which I show here. There are several constraints on this, this parameter beta and the mass of the primordial black hole uh, in x-axis is mass and the uh, y-axis beta. And there are several astrophysical and cosmological constraints that uh, make this, uh, makes this um, parameter space um, on one hand accessible to this various constraint and other hand, uh, one can have more, uh, more experimental observations in future that can prove this region of parameter space. And in a very small window, uh, if this this guy this beta is of the order of one, then you claim that entire curvature perturbation has got dumped in the primordial black hole, and that can behave as the entire dark matter candidate of the of the universe. And this is where the fine tuning comes. So pro producing a small amount of primordial black hole there, there is not much fine tuning, but pro 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 producing a primordial black hole that could lead to the entire dark matter candidate is very very tricky because again the point is for single field inflation you need the same dynamics to keep the value at the CMB to be very, very small, but at some become very large at some point. Okay, so how does this kind of calculation goes? You write down, so you, you have a scalar field that goes down, goes around the minima, and if some point of time, so at some point of time, these perturbations from the scalar field went out of the horizon, and then they re-entered the horizon, and, and if these perturbations uh, are large enough that can source a bar spectrum of the order of uh, uh, 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 1, let, let's say, then you uh, then you, you, you have a hope of um, making this um, uh, primordial black hole as dark matter. And just to uh, sketch out some of the de de uh, de details, so what you have to do is to solve the full perturbation, scalar field perturbations of the Mukhanov-Sasaki equ equ equations, and then have to calculate the power spectrum. But a rough understanding you can have, this power spectrum is inversely proportional to the epsilon. Epsilon is basically the slow roll parameter, you know? So this contains the velocity of the field. So roughly you can Im imagine if this phi dot, that is the velocity of the scalar field, if it's slow, then this epsilon will be small and this power spectrum will be large. And then you can have parameter black hole. So that's, so that's the idea. Okay, so now, 
uh, what does action like particle acting as the carboton, which I've been trying to motivate help in this business. So first of all, since it is uh, the carboton, it liberates the inflaton from producing these very large scale fluctuations. By liberate, I'm, I mean, the whole responsibility of gen generating the CMB scale and generating the large small scale primordial black hole is not with inflaton. Instead, now you can have another source which generates uh, large scale, sorry, yeah, large perturbations that's, that's, a, that's not small scale. So then the story remains same. You do the carb you do the carboton business, accumulate isocarbature fluctuation, then the carboton dom dominates, converts this into adiabatic fluctuations, and then some point of time this can uh, satisfy the conditions for primordial black hole for uh, formation, and then you can have this. So uh, what we did in our analysis was we took again the action like potential which was the carboton so here it is by given by the chi field phi field again is the inflaton and we we did some couplings and we introduced some couplings be between the carboton field and the inflaton field as you can see here and what does this cu coupling do this coupling basically helps you in getting these um, as i showed you the power spectrum roughly getting this velocity to be some very very small so once you make the carboton velocity very, very small, then you can generate large P of R. So as you will see, so this coupling, which I introduce here between the inflaton and the carboton is going to mess around with the velocity of the perturbations, of, sorry, velocity of the field, which will generate large curvature perturbations. Okay, so this, these are some of the de de details of the calculations of pert 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 perturbations and perturbation e equations and the mokhanov sasaki e e e equations. So let's skip this. So this is how the background equations look like. This is the background equation for the phi, this is the background equation for the chi. This, remember this, um, this uh, chi, has the cosine potential for the action like particle. And the phi can basically be any inflation potential. You can take star winds, you can take alpha attractor, you can put in any inflation. It, it, it will not uh, uh, depend much upon it. And then you write down the mukhanov sasaki equations for each of these fields. You write a mukhanov sasaki for the chi field, for the phi phi field. And then you basically solve for the curvature perturbation and the isocurvature perturbations. These are some details of the cal calculation. Let me skip this. Um, so as, as I told you, due to that coupling present between the action like carboton and the inflaton field, you get you get this extra friction like term in the which is in which is in the Hubble coefficient, and this extra friction like term basically slows you the velocity. I mean the velocity becomes small, slows you the rolling of the carboton field, and that slowing down basically gives you large fluctuations which leads to curvature perturbation. These are some of the de details of how the fluctuations look like. So let's let's not go into details into all of this. I don't have much time. On the other hand, just to sketch out, this coupling can take various forms depending upon your UV complete model. It can come from supergravity action models. It can come from alpha attractor kind of models. And you can play with this kind of form. And depending upon how this shape is, your, um, your curvature perturbations, uh, the power spectrum can get some shapes. We tried to play with some 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 of the shapes as you can see here. So this is the dip, this is the peak, and all this can be introduced in the in the cup coupling and the and the action like particles as it rolls down, velocity slows down. You generate this kind of peaks. The important point here is that whatever new feature you 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 introduce that is an os oscillating feature or stiff feature or a step feature that will show up in the calculation of the power spectrum coming from the action like curvature, as you can see. This is a curvature perturbation. This is the K value. Remember, again, K value of 10 to the power minus 2 is what CMB mesh, mesh measures. And uh, K value at any other value, larger values, is unconstrained by any other experiment. OK, so these are some more benchmark points that we studied. We can skip that. So let's go to the final results. So this is the power spectrum, and this is the k-value. As I told you, Planck and the CMB measures here, 10 to the power minus 9, but at this length scale, these values can be large. And this colored line represents different combinations of scale of confinement, initial value of the uh, action field, mass of the action like particle, and the spec and the feature and the coupling between the inflaton and the carboton uh, that, that we have chosen here. So you see some, some, some of them uh, are already constraints from the large scale structure data, Lyman alpha data, and FIDAS is basically a, um, 
uh, CMB distortion experiment, which can uh, which can be uh, sensitive to this kind of power spectrum, and it has ruled out some of these values here. So now, if you do the calculation of prim primordial black hole, this y-axis is what I showed you the bit beta normal again with some other normalization, and x-axis is the mass of the primordial black hole. Again, these colored lines are for chosen for different benchmark points for the action like physics mass and the scale of confinement and the initial value. So you can see the black where the black is. The, it can be entire dark matter candidate because this goes to one, this mass fracture of the primordial black hole, while blue and pink are still uh, not entire dark matter candidate, this primordial black hole not being entire dark matter candidate, but still they can exist. And in future observations of microlensing and gravitational lensing, we are going to observe or look at this if, if they are present. So then what's the story? The story is that this primordial black hole um, can act as the entire dark matter candidate and sourced by curvature fluctuations developed by action like particles present in early universe without fine tuning the inflaton potential. I have not introduced any inflection point or any bump or any funny features in inflection potential. Inflection potential is just the minimal as it is, like Sarovin's alpha attractor. And then just by utilizing the fact that cosine potential be behaves non linearly and some point of time can generate large. Curvature, uh, large uh, uh, isocurvature fluctuations and adiabatic fluctuations gives me the primordial black hole as entire dark matter candidate. Next is that this at the same time when you when you uh, introduce large scalar curvature perturbations at the second order this also introduced large tensor perturbations as well. I don't have time to go into de details, but uh, the idea is that when you write down the tensor equations of motion, the right hand side contains the source term coming from this scalar power spectrum or the scalar fluctuation. So if this right hand time is growing and is large, as we saw for the primordial black hole cases, then you will also introduce large tensor perturbations at the second, second order. And these, uh, you, you will see some of them are de and detectable, and these have some usual way to do the computation utilizing some gauge dependence and some burden potential. Let's, not, let's, uh, let's skip this. So this is my fi final slide. Here you can see this colored uh, uh, spectrum represents the gravitational wave uh, on the y-axis is gravitational wave uh, amplitude and x-axis is the frequency dotted line represents various gravitational wave detectors current and upcoming that can detect this kind of gravitational wave coming from action like particles and uh, this color line represents various choices of benchmark points for the action like physics now one important point to point out is that I, so this was the so we did this paper before the nanograph result came out this this year so the so the nanograph is not pointed out in this plot but uh, if you can see my mouse this is where the nanograph lies and you can easily have a benchmark point coming from action like physics which can satisfy the scalar induced gravitation wave coming from action like physics as the carbaton and also among all the all the uh, sources of gravitation, cos cosmological sources of gravitation wave, nanograph re results says that the scalar induced gravitation wave has one of the best fit uh, by Bayesian analysis compared to any other source like phase transition or dom dom or domain walls or cosmic strings. So we can really be seeing the gravitational wave from scalar induced uh, or the second order gravitation wave from action like particles present in our universe. This will uh, constrain or rather predict some of the mass of the action and the benchmark. Well, I, I, I don't remember this value, but roughly for an action decay constant of ad, ad, ad around action like particle of, of a de, 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 decay constant of around 10 to the power 14 GeV, you will able to get the spectrum. Okay, so this brings me to the con conclusion slides. Action like particles and source primordial density perturbations and non gaussianity if it can behave like a carboton, this is one example. Uh, predictions of such action like particles depends upon the matter sector. That means whether this action like particles couples to uh, some dark sector quarks, dark sector right-handed neutrinos. I showed you all those examples and how such matter content also predicts different uh, predictions for non-gaussianity, which can be measured, or some of them are already ruled out by the data. I particularly showed you, showed you a case of neutrino mass model, which is gives rise to seesaw scale and leptogenesis when this action like particle decayed and gave, uh, gave some initial abundance of right-handed neutrinos. And such very high scale physics or very heavy particles cannot be tested in laboratories, but you can invent this new way of pro probing this high scale physics by non-Gaussianity, primordial black hole, gravitation wave, and this kind of things. 
uh, again, in the last part of the talk, I, I tried to convince that action like particles present in early universe can also source large curvature perturbations at smaller uh, sizes of length scales of the universe via coupling with the in inflaton can give rise to primordial black hole as the entire dark matter can get without doing anything funny with the inflaton potential. And uh, one of these predictions can be the second order gravitation that we see in the nanograph. Thank you.